Hey guys, welcome to the tutorial. Today, I'll be showing you how to create this watercolor effect using Redshift and Houdini. The first one of the tutorial will be a Valen Balloon setup, but the main effect will be created in Shader by taking an unconventional approach to subsurface scattering, using our inflation attribute to drive displacement on our geometry to mimic the soft and layered look of real watercolor washes. I'm using Houdini 20.5.6, but I haven't had any issues using older versions. Let's dive in. First, I'll drop a geometry container and heading inside, I'll drop a far node, pulling in my input geometry I have prepared. I'll then give it some thickness using the thicken node, but if you don't have labs installed, you could use the poly extrude. I'll then scatter some points inside using the cloud shape from Polygon. I'll then use the point relax. The cloud shape from Polygon gives us a p-scale, which should help things repel more accurately. I'll then randomize the orientation of our points by using an attribute randomize, setting the attribute name to orient, and our dimensions to four. I'll then create an index using the enumerate node, setting the group type to points. We can now create our mask that will drive our inflation. We'll start by creating a vector two parameter, holding our minimum and maximum frame. I'll fit mine between one and 125. I'll then create another parameter for the duration, and another parameter for the seed. We can then fit our values between the frame range, creating a floating variable called start, fitting it between a random value based on our index and seed. We can map it between our minimum and maximum frame. I'll head to the geometry spreadsheet to check everything's inside the frame range. Now creating our mask, we'll fit the current frame between our starting value and our start plus situation fitting everything between 0 and 1. I'll then use a ramp to create some fall off. We can now create our geometry to copy to the points. I'll we'll start with the sphere, setting it to polygon, the uniform scale to 2, and the frequency to 4. I'll then use the UV project, setting the projection type to polar, and unchecking fixed boundary seams. Using this as our first input of our copy to points, and our points as our second. I'll use an attribute noise to create a color value, unchecking output raw value and using our index to offset the offset. We can then prepare our geometry for vellum using a vellum configure balloon. I found a cloth stiffness of four works well and a pressure stiffness of seven. We'll set the output group of the pressure to P-stretch. We can then drop our vellum solver. I'll turn off the gravity and increase the velocity, damping and friction. We can now create our collision. I'll do this by transforming our thicker node on the z-axis. I'll create a reference now to reference inside the solver and diving inside to drop a vellum constraint property, attaching it to our force output and setting the group to p-stretch. I'll head to the inputs tab and in the third input, pasting in our reference. I'll then check on rest length and create a short vex expression to reference our mask. Creating an int called pt, using the print point function to return an associated point for each primitive. We can then create a float and copy our mask. We'll then use our mask to drive our rest length. I'll also add a pop drag, adding a pop drag to slow down any sudden movements. Now using an attribute copy, we can copy the position from our vellum solver back to the reference. I we'll use the vellum post process to increase the resolution of our geometry and use an attribute rename to rename our mask. I'll then use the mask from geometry to create a border around our shape. We'll set the distance metric to a distance inside geometry. finally dropping an output and heading outside of our geometry container. I'll head to the Redshift OBJ tab and turn on Tessellation and Displacement. If you don't have this, you can head to the Redshift shelf and click on OBJ Prams. I'll now add a background, dropping a grid, and then creating a camera. I'll then create two materials, adding a constant for our background. Before diving into the materials, I'll head to the output context, going to Redshift, Advanced, and increasing our traces for combined and refraction. 
For the displacement, I'll start by mixing some noises. I'll then put in our border attribute to multiply our noise. We'll now create a redshift material. I'll set the preset to Moki Coffee, turning off our reflection and scatter scale. I'll use the alpha. I'll ramp the alpha to drive the opacity. And multiply it to drive the extinction scale. We'll also use the alpha to drive our displacement. I'll then pull in our color attribute, creating a ramp and filling in some colors. I'll then connect this to the extinction coefficient of the subsurface scattering. As you can see, the colors are inverted, so I'll drop the color correct, flipping the hue and decreasing the gamma. If I need to add some more variation, I'll drop a noise and a color correct, blending them together with a color mix. Feel free to have a play around. Thanks for joining. Chris here again. We love bringing in new and interesting voices from the community to create videos for us. And the only reason we can hire them is the amazing support we get from our patrons. So if you want to see more videos like this and also get access to a ton of in-depth courses, please consider becoming a patron of ours as well. And to all existing patrons, thank you so much. Without you, Antagma would not be possible. Thank you.